Hey, my friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion and your old pal Scott Michaels of Dearly Departed. And we are coming to you from the home of James Dean, Fairmount, Indiana, also the home of Garfield. <laughs> Uh, today I'm wearing a special pair of sunglasses. These are for Jennifer White Spencer. You are getting a fun vlog today. We are going to be working our way from Fairmount, Indiana all the way to Chicago, Illinois. And we have quite a few stops on our way through. But of course we couldn't come through Fairmount and not visit James Dean. So let's go do that today. Days with Jordan the Lion and Dearly Departed begins now. And if you're wondering if I've ever shown this before, no, this is new to me. This is by the same artist that did those amazing pop-up murals out there by in Marfa. Remember when we went out to Marfa and you could see like they, they made one of the house and they made one of George Stevens and, and all the main stars? Well, the same artist did this here. This is really cool. It's just as you're entering town on Route 26 and it's right across from, look at this, a jet fighter. We figured out this is like the third time that we've been out here together and the first time we came you said you never thought you would make it back that time. What does it mean to you to be in James Dean's hometown for like what the fourth or fifth time in your life yeah, now? I, I, it's, a, it's an honor to go and visit Jimmy and I don't know Jimmy's just something else. I, I, that's, he's a really special uh, actor person or whatever so to me it means a great deal to come here and to, uh, to walk in his footsteps and actually to pay, pay my respects to him. Now, can we give a little spoiler on my channel as to what you will be filming for your channel that people will see? Well, we're going to visit uh, Dorothy over at the James Dean Museum, who's going to give us a quick tour of uh, some of uh, my favorite things and her favorite things that are on display in the museum, all Jimmy's personal things. But actually, we're going to visit Jimmy's grave, and in the same cemetery is uh, Hugh Hefner's secretary. Who, I mean, it's like a, Leave it's, it to you. Yeah. So uh, Bridget Markbart from The Girls Next Door, I'm going to be able to interview about Mary. Uh, she said she'd let me interview. So we're going to do a Mary O'Connor thing. But, uh, but here today is all about Jimmy. Now let's go explore some Fairmount. See some of our favorite sites here. I love driving through this little small town because, you know, James Dean was famous for having this little check motorcycle that his aunt and uncle gave him and knowing that he used to ride it up and down these streets a fair amount all the time just kind of makes you go back in time. Now this is the James Dean Gallery Museum. This is not the Fairmount Historic Museum. That's where all of Jimmy's family, the stuff that Marcus has, that's all displayed there. I want to stop here because we noticed that there's another one of the murals. The guy that did the last one did this one as well. Also along the way, I wanted to stop here at the James Dean Park, because this, this reminds me of my days back in Hollywood. For anybody new to my channel, I lived in Hollywood for 21 years, and I used to hike pretty frequently up to Griffith Park. Top of the, Griffith Park has the Griffith Observatory, and that was used in Rebel Without a Cause, so they have two of these statues, one residing here in Fairmount, and then the other one being the one at the top of Griffith Park at the observatory. The specialness to this is that it was the the only thing that James Dean posed for as far as like this was something that he wanted done and something he commissioned and the artist met with Jimmy shortly before his passing and did the rendering of his image afterward. So that, like I said, there's one here in the park and then one identical with this same type of, you know, pillar and everything inside or at the very top of Los Angeles. Here we are, the historic downtown. A lot of great photos of James Dean. I've made several vlogs here before showing a lot of this stuff, especially that. That's a memorable sight from his last trip here. That's Look, there's a picture of him right there on the wall here, James Dean. So right here's where the new museum is going to be. It hasn't moved yet, but they're making a museum just for James Dean. So they've recently painted footprints where you can match up the photo of James Dean when he was walking there, like Scott's doing now. So now we're over at the current location of the James Dean 
Museum, which is, uh, this is actually, I forget what the, the house is called, Patterson House. And here they're showing Garfield as the Rebel Without a Cause because like I said, Garfield, Jim Davis is from this town as well. So I mentioned that uh, Jimmy used to ride his Czech motorcycle around town. This is it right here, along with his Letterman sweater. Just some of the fun things that you can see here at this museum. Definitely one of the coolest museums to anyone you can go to. There's his clothing from Giant. Items from his apartment. The bongos and the bull cape and everything. Here they have these two little animals right here from his apartment. And if you look, he's laying on the bed and they're above, above him. So you can see him laying up there. And those are right up here. That's his Letterman sweater from Santa Monica Junior College. Last motorcycle, his Triumph, the last one that he got before his passing. This was James well, Team's lasso from Giant. And there's photos of him actually messing around with it here. The original knives from the knife fight and the uh, little monkey. And take a look at this photo. They have that shirt that he's wearing right there in here on display. See, there's one right there. And his baby clothes. So if you want to see any more James Dean, I highly recommend you come check this museum out. They have a little bit of everything from every era of his days. They remember him zooming past. Um, their house or the high school and doing his favorite trick which was to lay down on the bike at its top speed which was um, 55 miles per hour. All right, very patriotic drive. We are heading out to the grave of James Dean. He's buried over here at Park Cemetery in Fairmount. Pretty clear directions also how to find him once you get in here. Here he is, grave of James Dean. Had several headstones throughout its time. And as you can see, people are always up here kissing it, leaving lipstick prints. They always kind of ask people not to do that because it ruins the headstone. As you can see, it leaves those marks that are hard to get rid of. A lost life cut too short. I know a lot of people want to make that kind of comment that I think is a little bit stupid. They say he had a death wish. His cousin Marcus told us, no, he had a life wish. He said he wanted to experience everything in life. Just a thirst for life. And a, you know, gentle reminder, it was not his fault. The accident was not his fault, so. It was Donald Turnip Seed's fault. Rest in peace, Jimmy. Somebody left a little newsboy cap down there. He gets a lot of fans out here. All the time, people want to come out and talk to Marcus Winslow, his cousin. And Mark's very accommodating to people, and they have a festival every year. On Jimmy's birthday, and around when he died, they celebrate. Well, you know, I have fans out here both times, but... What an actor. James B. Dean. Right over here beside him is his father, Winton Dean. His mother's buried in the next town over, Marion. And then over here on the other side of him is his uncle, Marcus. The Marcus we've been talking about was this Marcus's son, which would have been James Dean's younger cousin, you can see people sign their names on here to just leave a little piece of themselves with James Dean. No matter how many times I've been out here, it's always a very moving experience coming to pay respects to someone who had to, so much more to do in life and didn't get to do it. And now we have a long drive. We have like over three hours. We're trying to get to well, outside of Chicago for our next stop. Say that again. 
Good grief. Hey, we just entered Kokomo. Way down in Kokomo, Aruba, Jamaica. Oh, look at this house. Built into the side of that hill. I love it. Probably stays very cool. I just noticed that we're in Dayton, Indiana, and there's someone famous buried here I want to stop and visit. Actually, right here at the cemetery when you enter town. I actually didn't know we were going to be passing through this town, but I'm a huge fan of Blind Melon Shannon Hoon, and he's buried here. What a pleasant surprise. I didn't realize we'd be passing through this part, but here he is. I was introduced to, oh, he's right over here, sorry. Introduced to him by seeing him in the uh, Use Your Illusions, Don't Cry video that Guns N' Roses put out and then getting into Blind Melon. I know we can't all stay here forever, so I want to write my words on the face of today, and they'll paint it. His dad's buried right here next to him. And someone um, recently commented and said to the right of him is his brother. That was, uh, yeah. Short life. His mom still lives around here, actually. She's been uh, nice enough to meet with fans and tell stories and stuff. Last time I was here, I went over to the house that he lived in with her. And actually, I believe it's, um, they were turning it into an Airbnb, so it's probably done. It's probably ready by now for people to stay in. Rest in peace, Shannon. No rain. Blind Melon keeps his memory alive by still performing and doing the songs and they're still really, really good. Uh, I know a lot of people only know No Rain, but the whole catalog was really amazing. Jessica, since this is your sunglass vlog, I probably should have done this at James Dean too, but just let you kind of see your sunglasses here with Shannon, Macho Man style sunglasses. Hello, Gary, Indiana over there. Chicago Skyway. The Chicago Stock Exchange up here. Oh, this is great. Written right up here, it says, the world famous Billy Goat Tavern. Cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. Here we are, Billy Goat Tavern. This is not the original original. The original in 1934 was over by the old Chicago Stadium, and the owner, Billy, actually bought it with a bounce check. He made enough money on his first week being open that he was able to pay for that bounce check and eventually they moved it over to here to where it is now. Now, what's cool about this, the Billy Goat Tavern, it has the history of Billy in 1945 took his Billy Goat to Wrigley Field for the World Series Game 4. And <laughs> Philip Wrigley, the man who owned the Cubs, had him thrown out because he said that the goat smelled bad. So Billy put a curse, even though he had a seat for the goat, he put a curse on the Cubs and said they would never have another game at Wrigley Field. So here's some of the history of that here, where they would bring a goat out and celebrate Murphy the goat. And you can see they even put him right here on the door. But this also became famous because Bill Murray and one of the other writers for Saturday Night Live used to eat here a lot. and. Uh, John Belushi and Bill Murray both grew up in Chicago, so they came up with the skit of doing the cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger skit from this, based off of this. Cheeseburger, cheeseburger, no Pepsi, Coke. Apparently it's, it's actually backwards on Saturday Night Live. No Coke, Pepsi. So let's go on in and uh, get a bite to eat. 
if you're at your own risk. Awesome. Very cool. Wow, lots of memorabilia on the walls. <laughs> have a wall of fame over here. Cubs and a goat in 45. Then up here it says, Billy Goat says, if you can pronounce his name correctly, you get a free drink. I don't think I can pronounce that name correctly though. I think we gotta go with the cheeseburger, don't we? And that right there was Billy. Look at this. Award winners. 2017. Hey, what's up with the giant pickle? Two cheeseburgers, two chips. Those are our burgers. We did not get the curse breaker sandwich. The jalapeno. <laughs> Behind the bar they have like shirts and stuff you can buy, but I noticed they have a picture of Anthony Bourdain. And Andre the Giant. How about that? Stacked. You got Anthony Bourdain right there and then Andre the Giant right behind him. And then over here is the Wise Guys Corner. This place also became famous because the uh, the writer up here, Mike Royko, his office was near here and he used to eat here all the time. So yeah, take a look at all the cool curse shirts and stuff. First of the Billy Goat. This place is so cool. Very old school. They have multiple locations, so if you're coming, make sure you look for the original. How different is this place from when you used to come here? No. No. Same exact? Yeah, well, except for the TVs, yeah. Awesome. How's your burger? You took a bite already? Pretty good. It's alright, yeah. <laughs> Here's mine. Ah, uh, I'm excited. Cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. So they actually have a condiment counter. You can get the mustard and ketchup and all that stuff. All right, now we're ready to rock. And it uh, came with some chips. All right, my very first Billy Goat Tavern burger. It's good. I like the pickles too. I like the uh, the bun. And on that note, we are out of here. Out. Thanks for leaving the Billy Goat. Well, my friends, we're going to call it a day. Scott Michaels and I have made it to Chicago, and tomorrow we will be starting Route 66. Thank you for taking the ride with us today, and come join us for the entirety of Route 66 in the following days. Thank you all for watching. Have a great night. Goodbye.